Hello, I'm Aurelia Safdia and I'm a PhD student in the Microbiome and Cancer Division at the German Cancer Research Center. Hello, my name is Jens Poshov and I'm a junior group leader in the same division. And I'm Aran Elinov. I head the Microbiome and Cancer Division at the German Cancer Research Center. And today we are very happy to provide you with a quick overview of our review focusing about fungi and cancer that was recently published in the journal GUT. Fungi are estimated to constitute between 0.1 to 2% of the gut microbiome and are often termed the microbiome. Fungi are a vastly understudied kingdom. Some reasons for this are that they are eukaryotes. They have a thick cell wall. They grow at different morphologies and feature a high variability in their composition. With the expansion of research linking the microbiome with cancer development, progression, and response to treatment, we are increasingly curious to find out whether fungi also play a role in these processes. Several studies published in the last few years have shown that there are changes in the microbiome composition for different cancer types in both the gut microbiome and, as recently shown, also in the tumor microbiome. This is the case for a variety of different cancers, not just in the gastrointestinal tract, but also, for example, in breast cancer. These studies suggest a connection between fungi and cancer, but leave open the question of the functional impact if fungi are cause or consequence in tumor genesis. To answer these questions, a few mechanistic studies have emerged in the last years that highlight different avenues how fungi could influence cancer development or progression. This can be through interkingdom interactions by promoting bacterial impacts on tumorigenesis, through immune modulation by inducing immunity or tolerance in the tumor microenvironment, through disruption of the gut barrier, which is associated with microbial translocation, or through the secretion of bioactive molecules. So far, these studies have been focused on few fungi strains, such as, for example, Candida albicans, leaving the field open for many more discoveries. In the future, this could have implications for the use of fungi as a treatment option in the form of, for example, precision probiotics, the use of different types of antifungals, modulating fungal composition through dietary interventions, or even genetic engineering of fungi. Furthermore, fungi could be used for diagnostic purposes, for example, as biomarkers for prognostic assessment of cancer progression, the treatment certification, or the anticipation of adverse effects. We think that this is a very exciting new research field, and if you're curious to read more, our review, review is now online. Bye. Bye. Bye.